intention of presenting a distortion of reality. It can take the form of white lies to avoid embarrassment or exposure, half truths to keep from being caught, or seemingly harmless things said at the expense of others. We may say more than we really know to be true in the hopes of appearing smarter or more confident in our position or feeling. Sometimes we say something before we know the truth. Dishonesty has to do with our intention in speech. Are we nobody? Dash. Baited by greed, fear, or confusion? Or are we motivated by a sincere desire? To express what's true, what's useful, what's kind, and what's timely. Wise. Speech means we speak with the intention of not causing harm, and of fostering safety and security in our community. In active addiction, we develop a habit of dishonesty. We lie to cover up or mislead others about the nature and extent of our using or behavior. We lie so we can satisfy the craving our fixation feeds by hiding our actions, our feelings, or the amount of money and effort we put into satisfying our craving. Many of us lie just for the sake of lying because the truth represents a reality we can't tolerate. We get trapped by our secrets. And for many of us, having a double life becomes an addiction all its own. This is why honesty is foundational to recovery. This honesty is one of us. Habits that allow our addictive behaviors to flourish. As a result, recovery needs to start with an honest appraisal of exactly what lies we told and what dishonesty we spread during our addictive behavior. The Buddha provided some guidelines for wise speech in ad that dish into truthfulness. He said to avoid slander and gossip, recognizing that such unwise speech causes conflict and makes the community less safe. So, when we talk about others, we can ask ourselves, what's our intention? Is it to cause division or exclusion? Is it to cause shame or end? Dash. Embarrassment in someone else or to somehow make ourselves look better at somebody else's expense. It's possible to talk about other people with the intention of kindness, generosity, and compassion to seek under that standing or support for another. Gossip and slander do not contribute to this and instead cause harm. Similarly, idle chatter and saying things just to be heard or recognized, or to take up time when you're uncomfortable, can lead people to dismiss or ignore us and may create impatience and intolerance in our community. Wise speech is also reflected in the tone we use when we talk. If we express ourselves in harsh, angry, or abusive ways, we may not be heard even if we're being truthful. Speaking gently, with the intention of kindness, fosters a community of friendliness and safety. There are always exceptions, of course, and wise speech also includes using a loud and strong voice when you need to protect your safety. It may sound like wise speech is primarily about discerning. When not to speak, but this isn't always the case. Many of us grew up in families where it wasn't safe to talk openly about our thoughts and feelings. Some, because of certain experiences or cultural conditioning, of 
been taught that we don't have permission to use our voices or laugh. The power to speak and be heard. For many of us, practicing wise speech may mean learning how to use our voices that have been silenced, and to wisely communicate the needs and boundaries we've gotten used to keep. Yeah. In hidden, at times, this includes speaking up for others when harm is done. Many of us, in an effort to be right, for fear of locking the boat, or due to the exhaustion of repeatedly not being seen and heard, have favored being nice over being honest and true to ourselves. Right speech teaches us that speaking up, even when it's hard, is sometimes the best choice, and that speech is never truly kind if we cause harm to ourselves. Finally, why speech is careful listening. Dot, it is also knowing when not to speak when a wise response isn't available to us. We must listen with compassion, understanding, and receptivity. It can be really helpful to observe how much of the time you spend listening to someone else. It's actually spent judging them or planning what we're going to say in response. Deep listening, without selfishness, or an agenda, is an act of generosity that lets us build true connection. Inquiry of wise speech. Colon. Have you caused harm with your speech? How? Have you been dishonest or harsh in your communication? When? And in what specific ways? Do you use speech now to hurt or control people to present a false? idea or an image of yourself or of reality to demand attention or to relieve the discomfort of silence. Detail specific instances in which you used speech to mislead, misdirect, or distract. Are you careful to avoid causing harm with your speech? Do you say things you know are not true or pretend to know that? Truth about something when you don't, to appear more knowledge, that, able or credible than you are. List some examples. Wise action. Wise action is also based on in the intention to do no harm and to foster compassion, loving kindness, generosity, and forgiveness. We try to. Do what's skillful, and avoid actions that are unskillful. Wise action asks that we try to make choices based on understanding and not on thinking. Habits are ignorance. The Buddha suggested that we make a commitment to avoid five specific actions that cause harm, a commitment which is known as the Five Precepts We commit to the Five Precepts as our basic ethical system. 1. We set the intention to avoid taking the life of another living being. Or from causing harm to ourselves or another living being. 2. We set the intention to avoid taking what is not truly given or stealing. 3. We set the intention to avoid causing harm through our sexual con. Yeah. Suck. And to be aware of the consequences and impact of our sexual activity and desire. 4. We set the intention of being honest, of not lying, and of not using speech in a harmful way. 5. We set the intention to avoid the use of intoxicants and intoxicating behavior that cloud our awareness. We need to continually reflect on and question the intentions behind our actions. We may have moments of clarity, but these can quickly pass when old habits.
that her thoughts resurface. We commit to calm, death, scantily reminding ourselves of our intention to wise actions, to act in ways that are non-forming, inquiry of wise actions, stolen. Have you acted in a way that was unskillful or that created suffering? How? During those times you were unskillful or created suffering, how? Would it have changed the outcome if you had acted out of home? Death, passion, kindness, generosity, and forgiveness. Would you now have a different emotional or mental response to your past actions if you had acted with these principles in mind? First precept. Have you caused harm? How? Allow for a broad understanding of harm, including physical, emotional, mental, and karmic harm, such as financial, legal, moral, microaggression, or any of the isms, and phobias such as racism, sexism, ableism, classism, homophobia transphobia, etc. Even if you can't point to specific harms that you have caused, have you acted in a way that purposely avoided being aware of the proceeds? Death. Ability of harm. Second precept. People. Take. In many ways, you take goods or material possessions. You take time and energy, you take care and recognition. With this, broad understanding of taking, have you taken what has not been freely given? How? What are specific examples or patterns where this has been true for you? Third precept. Have you behaved irresponsibly, selfishly, or without full consent in Awareness from yourself or partners in your sexual conduct. How? Reviewing your sexual partners or activities have you been fully aware in each instance of other existing relationships, prior or good, death, rent mental or emotional conditions of yourself and your partners, and your own intentions in becoming sexually involved. How or how not? Has your sexual activity, both by yourself and with others, been based on non-harmful intentions? Have you entered into each sexual dash? How activity with awareness and understanding? How or how not? Fourth precept. Have you been dishonest? How? Archipelago, 1918-1956, an experiment in literary investigation, 1-2, translated from the Russian by Thomas P. Whitney, Harper and Rowe, Publishers, New York, Evanston, San Francisco, London, TFJ, 1817, I dedicate this to all those who did not live to tell it. And may they please forgive me for not having seen it all nor remembered it all, for not having divined all of it. Author's Notes